one ethan um, so Robin is calling in from from Switzerland uh, this morning, uh, so thank you. Um, and, and talking about quantum circuits, and in particular, um, efficient template matching in quantum circuits. Uh, thank you, Robin. Over to you. Thanks a lot for the introduction. So let me see if I can share the screen. Okay, perfect. So yeah, I will speak about um, template matching in quantum circuits. So this was a joint work together with David Sutter and Stefan Werner from IBM in Zurich. And currently a student at ETH, Romain Moya, is implementing our algorithm for Qiskit. So the talk will essentially be about how to find a small quantum circuit in a big quantum circuit, considering commutation relation between um, pairwise gates. So this might sound quite simple, but actually, yeah, to write an algorithm that is efficient for this task is um, it's not too easy. So the motivation of the project is the following. So if you have given a quantum circuit, you would like to find a simpler quantum circuit. So one that is cheaper to implement on an experimental architecture, but which is performing the same operation. Um, here we consider the cost measure of the number of gates. So we would like to find a circuit that minimizes the number of gates. Finding the optimal circuit is in general QMA hard. So we will not expect that we find an efficient algorithm um, that performs this task, even not on a quantum computer. So there are different tools that perform pretty well in practice. However, they might not be optimal. And one such tool for circuit optimization is template matching. This was introduced by um, Dimitri Maslow and Miller et al. in 2003. The essential idea for template matching is quite simple. So you have given a template circuit that is just implementing the identity operation. And you, then you have given a circuit that you would like to optimize. So in general, this might be a large circuit, but here, um, yeah, we just show a small one for simplicity. So what we do now is we search for a maximal match of the template in the circuit, allowing for pairwise gate commutation. So in this case here, right, we find that actually this sequence corresponds to this sequence in the circuit. And because this C0 gate can be commuted to the right, we can actually make this gate sequence here connected. And if we have found such a connected gate sequence, what we do is in the template, we just put the stuff that was not matched on the other side of the identity. So here, since the C0 gate is um, reversed to itself, um, we get here the inverse and the inverse is the C0 gate again. And then what we can do is we can use this gate identity now to simplify the circuit by just replacing this gate sequence found here by this single C0 gate and in this way simplify the circuit. So this is quite a simple idea, but the problem is how can we find all of such maximal template matches in a large circuit efficiently? Before I will explain how our algorithm works, let me um, explain maybe why a um, simple approach of greedy matching does not work in general. So yeah, we could think of just, ah, yes, and I should mention that from now on, um, if you consider this template and this circuit, that from now on, we just consider small circuits as a template and they do not necessarily have to implement the identity operation. Because for our algorithm, it will not matter. But clearly, if you want to do circuit optimization, finally, you are interested in templates that perform the identity operation. So if you would now do greedy matching here, starting from the left and going to the right, and we would first match these two gates. And now the last gate of the circuit could be in principle matched with this gate in the template, but the problem is that we cannot make the gate sequence connected. So we cannot move right this C0 gate, um, so we cannot move yeah, this C0 gate to the right or this C0 gate to the left, and because they do not commute. But um, using not greedy matching, one could actually find a maximal match. So if we do not match the second gate in the circuit with the second gate in the template, but we match it with the fourth gate in the circuit, then we find a 
full match because now this first not gate can be commuted through these two gates. And this is just an example to sh show that greedy matching is not optimal in general. So let me now present some previous work and our results before I um, explain the algorithm. So there have been heuristic approaches that um, were also introduced by Dimitri Maslow et al. and Raman et al. And they perform um, very well in practice, so they're quite efficient. Um, oh, sorry. Um, but the problem is in general, they do not find all the matches. And finding all the matches still helps to improve circuits further as was shown by Matthias Sirken et al. in a work where they reduce the matching problem to the Boolean satisfiability problem. And this approach actually um, allows to find provable to find all the matches. But the problem is that this approach is inefficient in the circuit size in the worst case. So our result now is a new template matching algorithm that has a worst case complex time complexity, um, which is polynomial in the circuit size. So this here is the number of gates in the circuit, and this here is the number of gates in the template. But as you can see, in general, the worst case complexity is still a polynomial of high degree if we have a lot of gates in the template. Um, but yeah, if you will see in the next slide, um, in numerical experiments, average case complexity of our algorithm seems to be much lower. And there's an additional advantage that I would like to show with this plot here. So if we plot the speed here on the x-axis, so kind of one over the runtime of the algorithm and the found matches on the y-axis, um, then we have here the satisfiability approach that finds all the matches, but which is um, yeah, quite slow. Then we have the heuristics approach somewhere here. And here's our approach that improves um, this approach in the worst case time complexity. And the nice thing is because it's quite a natural algorithm, um, you can introduce heuristics and then you can continuously right, say how much um, heuristics you want to use. So you can scale these heuristics parameters and the user can choose the trade-off between the speed and finding all the matches. In particular for NISC devices, this is very important, right? Because you might have a very small circuit and you really want to optimize every gate you can there. And then it might be worth to use no, no heuristics and to run the full algorithm. And here are some first numerical results. So this is still work in progress. Um, but here you, what you can see is a plot of the runtime of our algorithm for randomly chosen circuits where on the x-axis you have the number of gates um, that the circuit consists of, and we use a gate set using C0, X, and Z gates. Here you see the template we have used for this experiment, and then you see, here you see the runtime that we use to provably find all the matches, maximum matches of this template in the circuit. And you see it's still, yeah, if you still, if you go up to 50 gates, it's still quite a reasonable time to run the full algorithm. So now let me, let me talk about um, how our algorithm works. Um, our algorithm uses a so-called canonical form of quantum circuits. So we call this form canonical because it's independent or it looks independent of how the gates are commuted in the circuit. So here's two same circuit where some gates are commuted around and here you see the canonical form. So the canonical form is a directed acyclic graph where the nodes of the graph correspond to the gates. So here we just label the nodes right corresponding to the gate label in the circuit. And then we put an edge between two nodes if and only if two conditions are satisfied. Oh. So first um, the two gates corresponding to the nodes should not commute with each other. And second, the two gates should, um, it should be possible to move the two gates next to each other by pairwise commuting gates. In the example here, for example, we have this first gate and I commute with the second one. So there's no edge between the first and second node. And we have, for example, the first gate and the fourth gate that do not commute. And we can commute the first gate through the second and third gate. So um, we have an edge between the first and fourth node. And the direction of the edge is just 
going from low label to high label. And this, gra this um, graphical picture of quantum circuits is very useful because you can directly see which gates have to follow each other and you can kind of read off commutation relation. So a template matching algorithm now works in this picture. And here we just go through an example because going through the full Tudor code would be um, too time consuming. So in this example, we will consider this template circuit here and research maximum matches in this quantum circuit. And <laughs> I should also mention that our algorithm works for arbitrary gate sets, but here we have just chosen for simplicity one consisting of C0 and single qubit gates. And it's, I, yeah, it's easy kind of to reduce the task of template matching to the task of matching if you have an initial match. So we have matched one gate in the template with one gate in the circle. It, and the real problem is then to expand now this initial match to a maximal match. Um, all the other stuff like finding the initial matches is essentially just looping through the template and the circle. So I will not go into details here. And so here we have this initial match and you can see that we have also allowed to reorder the qubit. So for example, this target qubit here corresponds to this qubit here in the circle. Okay, the matching process now works in two phases. So we have a forward matching phase and a backward matching phase. And here, okay, here we have the canonical representation of the template and here the one of the circle. Now the forward matching phase <coughs> works kind of in a forward direction in the canonical graph picture. And, and we can prove that actually in this direction we can just greedy match and it's the optimal strategy. So here what we do is, okay, we have this initial um, node here which is matched with this node here in the template. And now we just consider all direct successes of this node and choose the one with the lowest label. So this is this gate here. And then we check if this gate can be matched with any candidate in the template. So the candidates in the template must be direct successes of this matched node here. And indeed here we see this C0 can be matched with this C0. <coughs> and as said, um, in the forward matching process, greedy matching is optimal. So we just match these two gates. So we mark them here in green. And then we just go on in forward direction like this. And if something, a node in the circuit cannot be matched, we mark it in black because we do not have to consider it further. And then the forward matching just goes through like this in the circuit until we end up with a kind of full forward match. So you can see here the green mark um, here. And the stuff marked in green is matched with the stuff marked in green here in the circuit. These are all the gates that cannot be commuted to the left of the initial match, right? Because it's in forward direction here in this canonical form. And this matching process is quite efficient, so it runs in kind of quadratic time in the circuit size. Now, the more complicated thing, thing is the backward matching path, but due to time restrictions, I do not have time to go into details here. Um, but if you're interested, please have a look at our paper where we go through the same example and explain this process in detail. So finally, we end up then with a maximum match, which actually matches all of the template apart from one C0 gate. And you can see here in the circuit, it's probably not too easy if you would have to do this task by eye, um, it might be yeah, a bit time consuming. So let me now point out an um, interesting application of this algorithm apart from the template matching that I've mentioned at the start of the talk. So now the application is people optimization. So people optimization um, does instead of searching for a match of a template, and we have given a circuit and we choose just some of the qubits on the circuit. So usually a small number like two or three qubits. And then we search for maximal gate sequence on these qubits um, that do not interact with any other qubits. So in the example here, we have a circuit with three qubits and we have chosen these two qubits. And now we search for gate sequence that, is maxi that has maximal length and do does not interact with other qubits. And here, Again, we allow for pairwise gate commutation. So this C0 can be commuted to the left here. This can be commuted to the right. 
Um, so this is yeah, kind of the maximal sequence we can extract. And um, this is actually really a special case of our algorithm because instead of the template, we just now say in the algorithm, everything is a match that is just acting on these two qubits. And if we have found such a maximal sequence, um, we extract this gate sequence, we write it as a unitary, and then we use an open source software library called Universal Q Compiler to recompile this unitary into a quantum circuit. So this um, software library does use state-of-the-art um, method to compile this with the minimal number of C0 required. And, and here you can see, yeah, okay, if we count the number of C0 gates as a cost measure because the single qubit gates are usually quite cheap to implement, we end up with a cheaper circuit because you only need two C0 gates. And then we can just replace the found gate sequence here with the cheaper one um, found by recompiling. <coughs> okay, so to conclude, we have introduced an algorithm for finding maximum matches um, of small template circuits and large circuits that scale polynomially in the size of the circuit in the worst um, case. And interestingly, our algorithm is closely related to a generalized version of the sub subgraph isomorphism problem for directed acyclic graphs. Um, here, I should mention that, okay, we do not refer to the canonical representation here, but if you represent the circuit just as a directed acyclic graph where the nodes are the, um, nodes are the gates and the qubits are the edges, then, then yeah, our, then our, this problem is closely related to just a subgraph isomorphism problem. And this relation actually tells us that, that we cannot expect a better worst case complexity um, than we, so clearly one can lower the polynomial degree, but we cannot expect to find an algorithm that is efficient in the template and the circuit size. As mentioned, we are now implementing this algorithm into Qiskit. And yeah, we will now soon compare it to other algorithms and check its it performance. So thanks a lot for your attention. And yeah, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Great, thanks Robin. Um, so we can jump in uh, with, uh, we'll combine two questions from uh, Kuba Pilich and uh, uh, Changyong Xiao. Um, so could you tell us a bit more about how you get the, the DAG from the original circuit? Um, for example, you had a, the picture on slide 15, like how, is that efficient? Ah, uh, yes, this is efficient. I mean, this, uh, if I remember correctly, I think it's cubic in the circuit size. Um, but if you run it for kind of randomly sampled circuit, we found that it nearly scales linearly. So, so it's quite efficient, yes. Um, I think worst case, yes, it's cubic. Um, I have to double check, but and in practice, it's more or less linear. So should I explain also again how to construct it? Or yes, I think that'd good? be interesting, yeah, thank you. Okay, so yeah, what you do is you essentially just, that you just um, have for every gate, you have, you have a node and then we just have to decide where do we put edges. And the, um, yeah, the condition to put edges is just that, so if you have an edge between these two gates, this means that these two gates do not commute. So this tells us this, um, gate must come after the first one. And in addition, it tells us that if we do pairwise commutations in the circuit, with this gate, um, the fourth gate here can be moved to the first gate. So in this example, right, you can see that um, we can move this first gate here through the second one because the controls commute and through the third one because RZ commutes with controls. And so this tells us, okay, we can move them next to each other and four and one does not commute, so we have the edge. So you, yeah, essentially just go through, um, run through like this to all the gates and you always put an edge if you can move the gates together and they do not commute. So it's actually, okay. it's a very simple algorithm. Thank you, so I'm gonna squeeze in one more question. Um, so the templates that you looked at uh, were for the identity. Um, uh, so Nathan uh, McMahon asks, have you considered looking at other templates? Um, for example, uh, approximations of the identity. So, so you don't uh, get the exact circuit, but you get an approximate circuit as, as in uh, 
Craig Gidney's talk yesterday. Um, yes, I mean, in principle, so, okay, if you just, just have any gate identity, right, you can always write it as getting the identity, but now if you want to have an approximate one, this is in principle no problem. I mean, you can just, um, you have approximate identity, and then you do exactly the same thing. You search for matches and you replace them. The problem could appear if you do this very often in a large circuit, right? The um, errors will accumulate. And mm -hmm. to keep track of this, this might be quite a complicated task. But in practice, you could just do it. And at the end, maybe check if the error rate is still OK. But OK, it's not the yeah, nice. So I'm going to abuse my position uh, as chair and ask one more final question. Um, so. Um, how does your algorithm, your forward-backward algorithm, compare to using a heuristic uh, for a, a Boolean SAT solver? Because it, so at the beginning, the alternative approach would be to say, well, look, this is a Boolean SAT problem, um, so let's use some heuristic that's already known for these kind of problems. Yes, I think, like, if you introduce heuristics there, um, it's very difficult, I guess, to get some intuition what these heuristics are doing, because, like, you're in a quite abstract space now. And in mm -hmm. our algorithm, because it's really like, um, you can really follow what is going on. So for example, in the backward matching path, um, you will sometimes have to build up like a tree of possibilities. And there it's very easy then to see what you can do with heuristics. You can use methods like tree cutting and you really understand kind of which matches you will miss if you do mm -hmm. these heuristics. Yeah. So I think this is a big advantage. Great, thank you very much. Thanks for a great talk. Thanks a lot.